interview with a political analyst that is Mothiora Kari feel on the current state of the nation. Karibu sana to KTN. Grace, mm -hmm. it's always a pleasure being here. All right. Yes. Let us get right into it. Yesterday we saw, after four weeks of protest, we saw President William Ruto say, enough is enough. Is it really enough? Well, he may want to say that, and I'll take it as a follow-up to the speech he gave on the 25th of June, mm -hmm. after the very rioters protest we had when the police murdered the most number of protesters who have ever been murdered in a day. Mm -hmm. He called protesters then criminals. And then immediately after that, there was a change of tune. But yesterday, he went back to that default setting. So now that's William Ruto. That's what he thinks of the Gen Z protesters, mm -hmm. that they're people who want nothing but trouble for this nation, mm -hmm. and he's wrong for that. So I was not surprised that that's the stance he took, because from the very beginning, he's showed that he's a man who is very difficult to take counsel or to accept times when times have changed against his tide. Mm -hmm. But what the president was saying was that some of your demands are heeded to them. You asked me to dissolve the cabinet, I've done it. You, you asked me to you know, drop the finance bill to reform, I've done it. I'm asking you to come and talk. There is no medium for us to come and talk. That was his argument yesterday. Do you think that argument really matches on why Kenyans should at least give this man a chance? Not at all. And I'll take you back to a meme that has been doing rounds in social media. Mm -hmm. One where you have two exhausters. One that's connected to the other through a pipe. So basically, when he appointed the new nominees for cabinet secretaries, yes. by putting in the exact people he had in the previous one, there was no change. Mm -hmm. It's just as good as he did not dissolve his cabinet before. Mm -hmm. Now, that cabinet, he had said before that there are people who do not know their jobs. He had said that it's an incompetent cabinet. And even putting that aside, look at the way that cabinet has been scored before. Mm -hmm. Kithure Kendiki has been a top performer on all the polls that have been done. Mm -hmm. But even if you look at the score he's been given, it has not been an A or B grade all the time. Mm -hmm. So that speaks to a leader who does not listen. The Gen Z's have told him that we do not want this cabinet. He goes ahead and reappoints people he had fired. Now, according to our constitution, I know someone may say there's a gray area, but it says in Article 75, I think through to 77, that when a state officer is dismissed after going a disciplinary process, of course, mm -hmm. with the end result being they are dismissed, mm -hmm. they are disqualified from holding any other state office. So you're trying to say that whatever the president did is actually illegal? Well, even if it's not illegal, mm -hmm. in a country with over 55 million Kenyans, you surely cannot tell me that he ran short of options to pick six people who are fresh, who would not raise eyebrows, who would not put us in the debate we are currently engaged in. So if he meant well for this nation, he would have gone for fresh people mm -hmm. and showed Kenyans that indeed he listened to their cries and that's why he's ready to start on a clean slate. Mm -hmm. But he chose to go back and do that which he's been doing, which is do a favor to his cronies. Mm -hmm. So perhaps uh, when we talk about the nominees of President William Bruto, he's the nominee of the 11, the first batch of 11 cabinet secretaries, the formation of it from the members from the Mount Kenya region yes. are higher. Yes. And that is what some of the Mount Kenya uh, members of parliament were saying. We need 
a, a, a good number of cabinet secretaries from this particular region. The president has done that. What does that constitute coming as we, you know, progress to the 2027 general election? Now, people or leaders from Mount Kenya have a right to express their opinion. Mm -hmm. But we know that chronism and tribalism are Kenya's Achilles heels. They are the vices that have gotten us mm -hmm. where we are today, where instead of looking for competent, suitable people, you look for those within your circle that you'll be able to influence mm -hmm. and thereby be able to reap the public. Now, he did appoint majority of them from Mount Kenya, but then this is the long game he's playing. Cause Grace, look at it this way. Kenya has over 44 tribes. When you take six positions and give them to one ethnic group, you clearly are telling the country that these people are different from you. Okay. So, He's alienating people from Mount Kenya because if this cabinet does not perform like we know it will not, mm -hmm. people will say it's people from Mount Kenya who have gotten us into this mess, this mess that we are in. Mm -hmm. And so people from Mount Kenya should not be trusted with leadership. So he's setting up Mount Kenya so that in future, let's say in 2027, should they want to front someone, the other communities will say, these people are the reason we are in the mess we are grappling with today. So what if they perform? Well, if they perform, well and good. But then, Ali Swahome is on that list together with others who have already shown that they cannot deliver to Kenyans as had been promised before. Mm -hmm. So we are talking from experience. They've had a chance and clearly they don't seem to understand how to do the job. Mm -hmm. So instead of waiting another three years for them to fail, William Ruto would have saved this nation by going for newer people, fresher people, people whose track records wherever they've been, indicate that given a challenge, they will always rise above it. Mm -hmm. Now, that aside, let us look at the game that William Ruto is playing at this point, which is he's realized that Kenyans have rejected his leadership. Kenyans no longer have faith in him as a leader. For him to continue being in office, should he survive the onslaught right now, he would need to be re-elected in 2027. Yes. So going to an election in 2027, William Ruto knows that he's likely not to be voted back. So to secure his position right now, he's starting to play the tribal card. Mm -hmm. That's why he's reached out to ODM, because ODM, honestly speaking, without sugarcoating things, has a backing from a certain ethnic community. So if he's able to draw that in, and then because there is a revolt from the mountain right now, and in 2027 he doesn't get that vote block like he did in 2022, then he'll, his options will be wider than when he didn't have ODM come on board mm -hmm. and they would be fighting out there against him. Mm -hmm. Now, all he would need to do is consolidate the Western Bloc. And that's why even when he dissolved or dismissed the entire cabinet, he left Musalia Mudavadi. So William Ruto is not looking to deliver to Kenyans right now. What he's looking at is to survive the protests, to survive the criticism, to survive those that are saying Ruto must go. But will he really survive the protest if he's threatening that, you know what, this time round enough is enough? 
you know, the security and the peace of the nation comes you know, at the front. And we've seen the Gen Z saying that no matter what, tomorrow on Tuesday, they're going to be on the streets. Will he really survive if that is the language? Well, the truth is, and it's been said before, that if you prevent a peaceful revolution from happening, then a bloody one is what you're going to have. Mm -hmm. The protesters have been peaceful so far. They have laid their demands and the demands are reasonable. William Ruto spoke of violence yesterday, if you paid attention to his speech. But then who has caused the violence we have so far seen during the protests? It has been, number one, the police. Number two, state operatives thought that to manage these protests, they need to make them unpopular to the general public. So they hired goons to infiltrate the protests. And we saw the havoc they wrecked. I say that because I come from Kawangware, where goons were hired. Mm -hmm. I can attest to that. I even have witnesses and evidence about how people are brought together to come and cause mayhem. So but the state sponsored the mm -hmm. violence we saw the very first time. But then once those goons tasted blood, now they do not need to be hired anymore because they know if we go out there, mm -hmm. we will pay ourselves through whatever we can loot, through whatever damage we can cause. Mm -hmm. So the violence we have witnessed so far has been instigated by those who hold the tools and instruments of violence, which is the government. So if the violence is to stop, our president, William Ruto, is the person to make that happen. And so far he seems keen because he's branded these protests as violence oriented, that all they are seeking to do is create chaos. Mm -hmm. So he's solely responsible for the mess we are in right now. Mm -hmm. He had a chance to continue fizzling out the steam from the protests by giving Kenyans a cabinet that at least has the face of Kenya, but he chose to go tribal. He chose to recycle those who had already been rejected. So the person culpable for whatever chaos that Kenya finds itself in today mm -hmm. is our president. He's the one that does not want peace. About the talks, mm -hmm. the Gen Z's movement has categorically stated that our demands do not require us to sit down and talk about anything. We want you to de-ethnicize mm -hmm. the public service. We want you to tackle corruption decisively. We want you to give us the rights enshrined in our constitution through Article 43. Mm -hmm. We do not have something to talk about. We just need you to deliver the promise you gave to us when you were campaigning. Remember, William Ruto, unlike the other candidates, mm -hmm. went around the country for a whole five years, gathering views, meeting people, making chatters with stakeholders. So by the time he was getting to office, he knew what needed to be done. Mm -hmm. And besides that, William Ruto, in the last financial year, had access to advices that cost Kenyans over 1.1 billion mm -hmm. shillings. With 1.1 billion shillings of advice, you clearly do not need to again go back to the same people to tell you something that experts have told you you need to do. Mm -hmm. He just needs to act. And he's acted, but through an action that instead of providing a solution is creating more problems. All right. All right. I wanted to take you back on where, because right now Kenyans want accountability. And when you're saying that people that were hired are willing to speak out and say that they were hired because lives have been lost and property have been destroyed. Yes. Are these people willing to come out and say that we were hired, this is what we were given? 
No, what there is is, you see, when someone confesses to you mm -hmm. that we were called and told that... By police officers? No, mm -hmm. by government operatives. Okay. They went to a certain petrol station where the motorbikes they were using were fueled. Mm -hmm. Someone paid for that. We were along these streets and the police did nothing to stop us because we had been told they would not interfere. So these are things that were captured by CCTVs, by some protesters who were on the streets then, mm -hmm. where you would clearly see people vandalizing, people looting, and it's happening in the full glare of cameras mm -hmm. and view of the police. Mm -hmm. So when I raise these issues here, I raise them because it's out there in the public domain. People have seen this happen. Mm -hmm. We've seen vigilante groups being armed and walking side by side with the police during protests. Okay. So those who hold the tools and instruments of violence in this country are the ones that deploy those on innocent citizens and protesters. Mm -hmm. And right now, because people have experienced this chaos and some have benefited, they are not willing to step back. Okay. All right. Uh, we also have the Azimio leader, Raila Odinga, and his now new stance. He says that for us to have a dialogue, these are the six pointers. This is not the first time that Raila seems to have bowed down from the pressure of Gen Z. Initially, we, we had him say that, you know, he's ready for talks. Then again, he said, we're not going to have the talks. There is that roundabout when it comes to ODM leader Raila Odinga causing, you know, uh, an appro on social media. What's your take on that? Now, if dialogue was the solution to all this, Raila Odinga has had his chance. You remember there were talks that culminated in the NADCO report that right now is gathering dust. Yes, there is an important points in the NADCO report that has so far been effected, but that happened because of the pressure that the Gen Z movement exerted, and that's the signing into law of the amended IABC Act. Now, there are other items in there that have already been agreed on. So, if it's gathering views, this already happened. We have that NADCO report is the most recent one. We have mm -hmm. other reports from the past, the Ndungu report, the TJRC reports, mm -hmm. the Akiwumi report. There are so many reports that if they were implemented, Kenya would not be where it is today. And that's what the Gen Zs are saying, that we do not need to sit and talk because we know what the problem is, we know what the solution is. What we are lacking is the political will to get the job done. Mm -hmm. And that comes from the very top. Mm -hmm. So Raila Odinga is not sincere when he's pushing Kenyans to yet another dialogue. Because if William Ruto had implemented what was in the NADCO report, mm -hmm. the high cost of living would have been tackled. And if that had happened, he would not have levied more taxes on Kenyans. So okay. Kenyans would not have gone to the streets. So the police would not have killed any protesters. Mm -hmm. So some of the demands, like right now, where Raila Odinga is talking about all those who have been killed mm -hmm. and those who have been maimed and harmed be compensated, would not be arising because all these could have been thwarted. So, the question is not about people sitting down to agree on what to do. Mm -hmm. The question right now is, Mr. President, are you going to release all those who are still being held mm -hmm. with matters related to the protests? Are okay. you going to comp 